Tire Wind is a startup based out of Tunisia in North Africa. The company wanted to find a new way to convert wind power into energy that extended beyond the traditional turbine. Now, wind turbines are doing fine. According to the American Wind Energy Association, in late 2016, the United States had a little less than 76,000 megawatts of installed wind capacity from more than 49,000 wind turbines. That's enough energy to power 20 million homes every year. However, they kill about 200,000 birds every year, sustain a lot of wear and tear, and they need a lot of room to work. Keep in mind now that, like, Cars kill 80 million birds on their own, and let's not get started about the cat stats. But still, I mean, 200,000, it'd be better if they didn't die, I guess. <laughs> Tire set out to create a better solution, and it actually turned to one of the most efficient birds in the world for inspiration, the hummingbird. Rather than blades, the tire has 1.6 meter wings made out of a carbon fiber ABC composite that flap like a hummingbird. Like, they flap. Like a hummingbird. Is that how a hummingbird does it? It's like up and around and down. I'm floating, I'm floating, I'm floating. And only take up 3.56 meters of total sweep area. The pre-industrial version, which could be smaller and more suitable to residential applications, has a rated output power of one kilowatt which is much lower than the two to three megawatt turbines on the market today. The machine is currently undergoing real world testing to learn more about its power efficiency, aerodynamic behavior, and material resistance, as well as its stress over the mast. And depending on how the results shake out, an industrial version of this new design could mean more wind generators in smaller spaces, less maintenance, and less dead birds. And if you need to know just how important this new development is, look no further then the company's sizzle reel starts out with a woman playing a violin in a field of wheat while a tire slowly rises to majestic chants in slow motion video of hummingbirds. Hope someone just wins a shiny crystal for that one. Can crystal be shiny? <laughs> Researchers from the Utah College of Engineering have developed an early prototype of smart glasses. I know what you're thinking, Google Glass was a misfire. But this set of specs uses liquid lenses to automatically readjust your focus. The glycerin lenses are enclosed by flexible rubber-like membranes in the front and back. The rear membrane in each lens is connected to three mechanical actuators that push the membrane back and forth like a transparent piston. The lenses are placed in special frames that house the electronics in a rechargeable battery to control the actuators. In the bridge is a distance meter that measures the distance from your glasses to whatever you're looking at using pulses of infrared light. According to the researchers, it only takes 14 milliseconds to refocus when you're looking at something else, which is about a quarter of a blink of an eye. You load your prescription into the glasses using an app, and as long as you charge them every night, since the charge only holds for 24 hours, this could mean that you have the same four eyes for your entire life. You know, as long as you don't fall asleep in them, drop them, have your wife step on them, or lose them at the bottom of a lazy river. Now the team is working on a sleeker design and has created the startup Sharp Eyes to bring them to market. But I think you can go to the market with these things right now, thick, bulky and round frames have been on pop icons for years. And you know this marriage of gadget freak with geek chic has just got these hipsters salivating. I mean, I'd wear them, but I'm, I'm likely not cool enough to even get a pair. I'm floating, I'm floating, I'm floating. From Las Vegas to San Francisco in 13 days on a 3D printed bicycle. That was how long it took a pair of professional industrial designers from 3D Printing Service Bureau Sculptio to ride their creation from CES 2017 in Vegas to the company's factory in San Francisco. The Darwin Bike Project set out to create the first fully functional bike created using digital manufacturing. It took designers Alexander Diarsetti and Peter Wudelka seven weeks and $4,000 to create a bike that consists of 70% 3D printed parts. The team uses SLS, DMLS, and CLIP technology. Now SLS and DMLS are pretty well known, but CLIP stands for Continuous Liquid Interface Production. It's a photochemical process used by Carmen 3D that produces parts that are both mechanically strong, but still have a good surface finish. All told, about seven critical components were 3D printed, including the brakes. 
The pair chronicled their 600 mile journey in a set of YouTube videos, including when the bike started to become a little unstable towards the end of the trip because parts started coming unglued from the frame. Now, while the trip did prove the bike's strength and reliability, it also exposed a few areas that could be improved. But it couldn't have been all that dangerous. I mean, after all, they let the Sculptio CEO take it for a spin in Vegas. And I mean, they did give it a bit of a test drive in Paris before they even flew it out to CES. I wonder, I wonder what that scenery was like. Paris, dirty old Vegas. Whimsical Paris streets, dirty street across from the Bellagio. You gotta have a little bit of Paris riding on that 3D bike through Vegas with one of like those 35,000 gallon jugs of like fish tank syrup. You know, that's the shape of the Eiffel Tower. That's a little bit of American Paris for you. I'm David Manti. This is Engineering by Design. Uh, <laughs> Today, I'm floating, I'm floating, I'm floating. <laughs>